How's it going everyone? I am Dylan, this is All You Can Board, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to play Yak. Now, Yak is a brand new game from Pretzel Games, which is under the Plan B banner, and it's honestly a really simple game to learn and play, but it's got amazing production value and a lot of strategy going on, even when those simple decisions are gonna be making. So, everything in this game revolves around building your stone tower as effectively and efficiently as you possibly can, and to do that, you're gonna be interacting with these Yak carriages that are on the board. Now, you can only ever interact with the one that is directly in front of you. You're gonna be taking stones from it by trading food tokens, you're gonna to be taking new food tokens from that carriage. There's gonna be restrictions on each carriage to limit what you can and can't trade uh, to be acquiring new stone uh, tokens. Uh, and that's pretty much a lot of the, the game just kind of explained right there. But I'm obviously gonna go through all the phases in more detail. I'm not gonna go over setup because honestly the rulebook covers it pretty well um, and it would just take up extra time in this video I don't think is necessary. So if you have any questions about setup, let me know in the comments. Otherwise you'll find everything you need in the rulebook. So there are three phases to every round of the game around is considered a day. The three phases are sunrise, noon, and sunset. Most of the game takes place in the noon phase. Sunrise and sunset are sort of upkeep mostly, but we're gonna go over them all anyways. So let's jump right into the first phase. And I just wanna say thanks to Plan B Games for sending us this copy of Yak to make this how to play. The first phase is sunrise. In this phase, you'll simply secretly pick what action you will do in the next phase. You'll do this by selecting the card from your hand that corresponds to the action you wanna conduct and then place it face down in front of you. Once all players have done this, sunrise is over. Noon is where you will execute the action you secretly selected. The first player will reveal their card and carry out their action. There are three possible actions to choose from. Build, restock, and market. To build, trade food tokens from your personal supply to the carriage in front of you. The trade chart tells you the cost of acquiring stone blocks. One food token gets you one block, three food tokens gets you two blocks, and five food tokens gets you three blocks. If any of the blocks you are taking are a crystal block, light blue, pay an additional food for each crystal block you are taking. Now these crystal stone blocks are wild and can count as any color in your stone tower. However, at the end of the game, you cannot designate two separate crystals as the same color. So for instance, I collected three stone blocks. I'd have to designate each one as its own separate color. I couldn't make all of them maroon or all of them black or two of them black or anything like that. So just keep that in mind when you're getting to scoring. Place the food tokens that you are trading into the carriage in front of you. The max a carriage can hold is nine. Any excess tokens are placed in the market in the center of the board. Now take an amount of stones from the carriage in front of you equal to the trade that you made. You will now place these on your stone tower. The first stone may be placed anywhere. After that, each stone must be placed next to a stone or stacked on two stones from the previous level. Your goal here is to create groups of the same color. After taking stones, if there are no stones left in the carriage, draw three stones and place them in the carriage. If there are still stones left, however, you don't refill it at all. The second action you can choose to take is restock. To do this, simply take all the food tokens of a single type from the carriage in front of you and add them to your personal supply. The max amount of food tokens you can hold in your personal supply is eight. If you would have more than this, only take an amount that puts you to your max. After you finish doing this, draw one stone from the bag and add it to the carriage directly in front of you, as long as it's not already full at four stones. If it is, just ignore this refill step. And the final action you can take is market. To do this, take two food tokens of any combination from the market on the board and add them to your supply. Then draw three stones from the bag and pick one. You may add this stone to any carriage on the board, not just the one in front of you, as long as there are empty spots available to place it. Before we leave this noon phase of the game, I just wanna mention carriage restrictions. Each carriage has a restriction attached to it that limits you how you may trade food for stones. For instance, this carriage says you may not trade bread. This one says you may not trade milk. These mean that when trading food tokens for stones, you may not use the food tokens of the type that the carriage restricts. And finally, the final phase of the game is sunset. In this phase, simply take back your action cards, pass the starting player marker to the next player clockwise, and move all the carriages one spot forward in the direction they are facing. Then a new round begins. Play continues this way until one player has completed the fourth level of their stone tower. When this happens, all players will finish the round that they're on and then get one final round to score as many points as you possibly can and then you'll proceed to scoring. Now the first player to complete the fourth level of their stone tower will also get this little marker right here which gives them three bonus points at the end of the game. The last thing to talk about are the fog stones. There are five white fog stones in the bag and when you draw one, you'll have to go through a few special steps. Fog is never placed in a carriage. No matter how many fog stones you drew from a single draw, set them aside next to your board and turn all the yak carriages so they are facing the opposite direction. Now draw replacement stones for any fog stones you drew initially. If while drawing replacement stones, you draw more fog stones, repeat the initial steps. 
That is, turn the axe the other way again, set these stones aside, and draw replacement stones again. Now, at the end of the active player's turn, each set-aside fog is placed on one of the mountain spaces. If there are still empty spots remaining after you do this, then you're finished and don't need to do anything else. If all the spots are filled, however, first check if the fog marker, which is the cloud token, is on the board. If so, remove it. This frees up a new mountain spot for the rest of the game. Then, return all fog stones to the bag once more. If the mountain track fills up a second time, leave all the fog stones on the mountain track for the rest of the game and only put the one extra fog stone back in the bag. There will now only be a single fog stone for the remainder of the game that is continuously put back in the bag. And those are basically all the rules to Yak. So let's go into scoring. You can find out how you're gonna get points in this game. There are three scoring categories. The first one is group size. To score this, check the group size of each group in your stone tower and score an amount of points for each one. For instance, a group of three gets you four points. A group of four gets you eight points, and so on. Refer to the chart for all the values. Calculate the score for every group in your tower. Note that in this case, groups of two don't score you anything. However, they will still count for the next scoring category. Next, score for the number of groups you have in your tower. Count up how many groups of two or more you have. Then, score an amount of points equal to the chart. And lastly, there are some extra point categories. Single stones by themselves are worth one point each. The stupa marker is worth three points and the person with the most leftover food tokens gets two points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. And honestly, those are all the rules to Yak. Now there is a variant that I would honestly recommend playing with every single time. I think it makes the game much more interesting. It doesn't add too much complexity either. And that'll be these scoring objective cards. They're gonna be placed on the three spots on the board here. And these are basically extra bonus objectives that you can go for for scoring. It might um, involve you know, having uh, certain colored blocks in certain places on your tower. Regardless, it just adds more uh, interesting decisions when it comes to scoring and how you're crafting your tower. I would honestly add them in whenever I could. But otherwise, that is the entire game of Yak. Now, I'm hoping this helped you get this to the table a little bit quicker. If you have any questions whatsoever, just go into the comments and ask me below in case I left something out or there's something you want clarification on. But otherwise, the production value of this game is beautiful. It's a whole ton of fun to actually get this to the table and, and use all the little Yak components and everything like that. And it's honestly not very hard to learn or teach to other people. But I think there's enough depth that coming back multiple times, you'll be crafting your tower a little bit differently every single time. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, we will see you next time.